but uh, <laughs> Ms. Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. The first item on today's agenda are the minutes of the Strategic Priorities Administration and Protective Services Standing Committee meeting held January 11th, 2010. The recommendation is that the committee approve those minutes. So moved. Second. Moved by Councillor Asmussen, second by Councillor Robinson. All in favour? Opposed? Carried. Item two are minutes of the Special Strategic Priorities Administration and Protective Services Standing Committee meeting held January 30th, 2010. And again, the recommendation is that the committee approve those minutes. Moved by Councillor Reamer, second by Councillor Robinson. All in favour? Opposed? Carried. Item three is report of the Deputy City Manager regarding the Coquitlam Emergency Program Bylaw number 4092-2010. And there's an introduction by our Deputy City Manager, John Dumont. Uh, thank you very much, uh, through your worship. Uh, this is an update of our emergency program bylaw. The bylaw that's in place at this time was actually done in 1999 and it's now out of date. And uh, so we're bringing forward a new bylaw. The new bylaw reflects the BCIRM system, BC Emergency Response Management System. That is a system that's been adopted by the province and municipalities around the province. And our emergency program, our disaster response plan, actually conforms to BCIRMS. Uh, the role of, uh, just, just to highlight for the public, uh, the role of council within the emergency program, council has two important roles. Uh, one is in non-emergency situations, council is referred to as the executive committee. So council is responsible for policy decisions concerning the emergency program, such as the report that's before council tonight to, to approve a new emergency program bylaw. The second role that uh, council has is uh, within an emergency or, or disaster. And within that uh, situation, council is what is called the uh, policy group uh, within the BSERM system. And uh, in a case of emergency, if uh, uh, extraordinary resources are required or a state of local emergency needs to be declared, then council will be brought together on an emergency basis to approve those extraordinary measures. So those are the two roles of uh, council that are reflected in the bylaw. Uh, within the bylaw, staff's role is uh, uh, during non-emergency times, there's an emergency management committee that meets periodically to deal with uh, administration of the emergency program. And during an emergency or disaster, uh, staff forms what's called the uh, emergency operations center management team and uh, responds uh, to an emergency with the uh, guidance of council. Uh, that's a brief overview of the uh, bylaw. Karen Bassey, our emergency program manager, is also here tonight uh, if Council has any detailed questions. Thank you. Councillor Reamer has a question. Thank you. And um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm just being a, a little bit um, possibly anal here, but um, under our definitions in our bylaw, uh, we've got BCERMS. Uh, which is BC Emergency Response Management System. I'm just wondering if we should add the word response uh, in the definition in between emergency and management. Yes, we can, we can certainly do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none. I'll, I'll move the Moved by Councillor Reamer. Second. Second by Councillor Asmussen. Discussion? In favor? Opposed? It's carried unanimously. Item 4 is report of the City Clerk regarding an application for a permanent change to a liquor license for a food primary establishment, which is the Golden Onion Restaurant Limited, which is located at 3055 Anson Avenue. The staff recommendation is that Council not support the application by the Golden Onion Restaurant for a permanent change to their food primary license and that the report of the city clerk dated February 15th, 2010 be forwarded to the Liquor Control and Licensing Branch to serve as council's comments on the application as prescribed under the Liquor Control and Licensing Act. Okay. Moved by Councillor Reamer, second by Councillor Reed. No comments, all in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. Con okay, Con Councillor Reed. We've had comments will go with the report to Victoria. Okay, these are the comments we've received from the public through our process. Thank you. Uh, that motion has passed unanimously. 
Thank Item you. number five is report of general manager strategic initiatives regarding major facilities construction progress update four. We have a presentation by uh, our general manager of strategic initiatives and our fire chief. And as we start, uh, thank you very much, thank you, Mr. Mr. Gravel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Now on the south side, uh, uh, up to about the uh, um, middle of January, we had a lot of construction trailers and uh, a lot of activity here, but uh, all this parking area is all, it's all new parking, including landscaping and street lighting, and it's all complete. So this is where a lot of our parking is uh, now on the site since we're working on the, on the north, north half, half of the complex. And here's a picture showing the new uh, ice uh, rink or, or facility. And immediately beside that is the uh, new curving center. These uh, two sheets of ice uh, were brought on board on January 15th and, and have been used by the public since that date. Uh, now the old curling uh, uh, facility is now torn down. This is a picture taken about uh, a week and a half ago. And uh, we've been making a lot of progress on this end. So uh, a lot of that concrete and material you see there will be recycled and reused somewhere else in the site. But uh, on the bottom right hand corner, that's where the new project entrance to the facility was used and entrance here to the important uh, ice arena facility. And uh, the new uh, sports hall of fame, which is council is aware of that, uh, is really going to be part of that uh, entry to feature into the facility. Uh, here's a picture of the uh, the old arena, and uh, you can see little slabs of concrete. So mm -hmm. What the contractor did is they cut out uh, slabs that could easily lifted out and, uh, and taken out. So uh, this was taken a couple weeks ago. Um, what's really interesting in this picture is we've taken out, out the old wooden wall, which was part of the old facility, and right where the uh, high lift cranes are there, and that's where that old wooden wall was. So mm. it's opened up that facility, and uh, now we have a, a, a big bowl area, 360 degree bowl, so when it's all open, people will be able to walk along the pathway around the entire facility. So it's really opened up, up the, uh, the, uh, the old ice surface, and it should be a, a, a real pleasant uh, feature uh, once we uh, complete the work. Um, the, uh, the old former lobby is under is uh, being completely rehomed now, and uh, there's a lot of work happening there. So uh, a lot of uh, uh, again on the north side, we're into, into construction, and uh, construction is moving well enough. So um, in terms of the project, the uh, project is um, about nine months ahead of schedule right now. We're making good progress, and uh, um, in terms of the budget, the budget's looking good. We're running uh, on track for the project, and. Uh, we should be able to bring the project uh, along with the budget. Um, one point that I would like to clarify, um, uh, last April when there was a reduction of four and a half million dollars in the capital budget, um, some people believe that that was a savings to the, to the city in terms of that there's capital money to do other things. And, and there were no savings, that it's money we didn't have to borrow. So by doing so, we have uh, now borrowed less money and what that has resulted in is rather having a 2% tax increase to fund those, that extra uh, dollars required 2% over three years, we only had a 1% tax increase in 2011. So that $4.5 million has been saved and reduced uh, taxes to the general public and, and our, our ratepayers here in the system. So there's no $4.5 million surplus there. It's, it's been already reflected in your um, in your council budget, which you approved for 2010. So we shouldn't try to spend it. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. 
So uh, now uh, we'll turn over and uh, we'll start on the uh, town center yeah. fire hall okay. expansion. Okay, before we get there, we've got three, me three members of council, please. Uh, Councillor Robinson. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you very much for including in your report the concerns about the guardrails. Um, what I did was I actually went to WorkSafe BC requirements because I'm concerned about employees who have to clean those stands. And what WorkSafe BC, their requirements, um, a, a guardrail needs to be uh, 40 to 44 inches above the work surface if it's on a raised floor, open sided floor, mezzanine, gallery, balcony, work platform, etc. That's four feet or more above an adjacent floor. So I can give you, I'm just saying that from a work safe perspective, it's not the same thing as building requirement and that you may want to take a look at this as you take a look at options. So I'll just leave that with you. We are looking at we're looking at a number of options. We're just uh, pricing them out, and we're we'll bringing them back to the city <coughs> council. So Great. Great. Thank you, Senator. Is the microphone on for Mr. Gravel? Councillor McDonough. Test. Test. That's better. Oh, thank you for your report. Um, just uh, what uh, Selena brought up here about the railing. I wanted to talk about it too. Uh, um, we've got a couple of new. Um, uh, new people working here, yourself included, and our, a new general manager. And I, I hope uh, I brought this up, but I haven't got an answer back on it. Um, before this comes to our committee on the railing, I hope this is going to go through the uh, ice and dry floor committee to get their uh, view on whether that glass needs to be raised or not. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, we can do that. And then once we uh, receive that information, then we can report back to the committee. Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding uh, Councillor uh, Robinson's uh, new information. Thank you. And Councillor Reamer. Thank you very much. Um, I too was concerned about the height uh, of those rails and uh, my concern um, was for uh, young kids who accompany, who go to watch their brother play hockey. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know how many kids I've watched at the main rink, you know, climbing on those rails. And, and there is a bit of a fall in, in some areas there. And uh, so that is, that's my primary concern there, but I, I, I know that you're addressing that, so that's uh, great. Um, my other question was, I have heard second or third hand that there are some problems with the ice in the new rink uh, because of the, uh, um, the thermal uh, heating system that we have. Is, I, I've heard that second or third hand. Um, I don't actually know, it's just a question. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm not aware of that uh, situation with the thermal system. Uh, we did have a situation in late January where uh, we had a problem with electrical solenoid in, in our refrigeration unit and, and when that went that caused uh, the whole system to go down and we, we had a failure there. But in terms of the, um, uh, the system that we have in place in terms of the energy efficiency, I'm not aware of a, uh, of a problem with that, but I'll definitely uh, look into that to see if there's any truth to that, but uh, personally, I'm not aware of that. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Councillor Asmussen. Thank you very much. I talked to the General Manager of Parks and Rec, and she said the problem with some of the ice in the curling is the, there's a humidifier that is not functioning, and they will replace it at the end of the curling season. This is some of the problems. That's what she had explained, that there was having some ice problems for the curlers in particular. My question comes to you, it comes from Mr. McDonnell, on top is the dry ice and floor. When we get into a building, there's other issues such as the railing. Have you had a, a discussion with the dry ice and floor people about what they may see as deficiencies? It's one thing for people to look at a building and look at the design on paper, but now that's going up and we're doing some things, there's, even when we did the town center sports field, we found once it's up there. So have you had a meeting with that group to talk about how the building's now looking, other issues that may need to be attention that they may want to bring forward to you. Have you brought in a meeting together, those people, on, just on the railing issues, but any other deficiencies that they may see? Sorry, Mr. Mayor, are you referring to the, um, the user group? The user group, dry ice and floor user group. Um, I don't believe we have. We've had, a lot of, we've had a number of meetings between project staff and operating staff, but um, uh, that's something we can follow up on and, and uh, talk to them because uh, we will be meeting them with, with respect to the railing issue as well. So, Because, you know, they're going to be the users of the facility yeah. for the long term. So as we're going through there, if there is deficiencies in what they see, um, it may be worthwhile trying to flesh that out before we get too far down the pike here. Thank you. 
Uh, just for clarity, it's the uh, ice and dry floor, not the dry ice and floor. Ice and dry. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> we don't use dry ice. Um, there, there, I just want to clarify some elements because there are the typical ex exemptions from the requirement for guard, for example, are the two, the two ones that always get cited are loading bay and stage, the front of a stage, where clearly you, you wouldn't have a four foot tall or a three foot six tall uh, guard uh, at a drop, even though there is a requirement for a drop for, for, a, for a guard of some type otherwise. We actually have another building in, the, in Coquitlam, uh, the Evergreen Cultural Center. The balcony levels have the same height of guard, but it's more of the, the way it's designed and the way, uh, the way it would function, uh, because in the case of an athletics, or again, I think the guard in front of an athletic uh, bleacher is more likely to receive uh, someone jumping up and cheering and potentially on a floor that's a little bit slippery from spilled pop or something, you could end up with a, a, serious, uh, uh, a serious injury from a fall or worse. And so I think council has expressed and, mem and mem members of the public have expressed that we need to review this particular one, notwithstanding that it probably does meet the building code. Uh, it ought, uh, we're going to have to look at how we can make it, uh, make sure that the, the public is safe in its use. And uh, that's about it. Uh, seeing no, none others, on to the fire, fire, fire department. Okay, so we'll now we'll, um, we'll uh, talk about the uh, town center fire hall expansion. And so uh, this is not a LEEDS um, uh, building certification where we're going actively looking to achieve LEEDS and, and put a plaque on the wall, but we have followed many of the design parameters for LEEDS and, and, and LEEDS um, stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design and it's kind of the state of the art in terms of building these design and the more you can find a, uh, follow those type of initiatives, uh, uh, the more you can be leaders in, in, in our community in terms of energy uh, sustainability and, and environmental initiatives. So some of the guiding principles uh, on the Town Centre Fire Hall is for with respect to the site, we've um, limited site disturbance and restoration with, of green space as much as possible during the construction phase. We're going to have good stormwater management practices through the use of bioswales and permeable site materials. With respect to water efficiency, we've uh, chosen drought tolerant regional landscape material throughout the site to reduce our water usage and incorporated dual flush toilets and low flow plumbing fixtures throughout the facility. Uh, with respect to energy and atmosphere, the project is incorporating high performance mechanical and electrical systems, zero use of uh, CFC based refrigerants and our um, HVAC and refrigeration systems and Energy Star re related equipment and appliances uh, where they're available. And re with respect to materials and resources, we're practicing the four R's of reduce, reuse, recycle and regional. We're using exposed structural elements on the building as final finish. We're diverting as much of the construction waste as possible to recycling, salvaging or donating as, as much as we can so it doesn't go into our waste stream. Uh, we're we've utilized design strategies which employ regional tradespeople that are local to our, our economy here. And finally, we specified materials with recycled content and are made from rapidly renewable materials. Uh, with respect to the inside of the building, we've incorporated operable windows in all regularly occupied spaces, maximizing airflow, uh, daylight, natural daylight into the building and, and, and views and use of low VOCs, which is volatile organic compound materials such as paints and adhesives to reduce um, uh, the effect that, that these can have for people when they're working inside this, this type of office atmosphere and the use of wood and agrofiber products wherever we can do that. So those are the kind of the guiding principles that we've used in the design and, uh, and uh, led, us, led the team in terms of where we are today with a product that is uh, now into construction. Um, here's a site plan. I'm going to turn it over to the fire chief. Um, uh, what's shown in red is the new expansion uh, part of the facility and uh, second, first and second floor are about 8,600 square feet of finished space plus a full unfinished basement of approximately uh, 3,000 square feet and, and the fire chief will lead you through the floor plans and just explain to you uh, how uh, this addition now meets his operating needs uh, for a growing uh, city such as Coquitlam. Good evening, Your Worship and Council. As Marie said, I'll lead you through the uh, detailed floor plans we have and also the artist drawings and uh, what the interpretation of what the final building will look like. Uh, as Marie said, uh, the red indicates the, where the new building footprint will be. 
The gray at the top of the screen is the existing administration building, which will be converted over to our fire prevention. As you know, fire prevention is currently located down on Glen Avenue in Lee Space, and they'll be moving back, so it's, uh, our operation is, is more combined. And uh, the gray area on uh, my left of the screen is the existing fire station with the parking lot out front, the new parking lot uh, entering off of Pinewood. So you have here the, the basement floor plan. Like Bruce said, it's going to be unfinished. Um, maybe I explain a little bit about the, the top part of the diagram. Currently, that's our storage room, and that will be the IT area, uh, be a secure area that uh, we've been working with uh, information technology on uh, the installation there. And so our storage on the uh, new building will be on the, the bottom right, my right of the uh, um, building. And on the other side, you'll see a set of stairs which lead straight to the uh, fire station. Uh, those were put in there by design so that the crews would be able to access the basement area uh, quickly in the event of uh, having to respond to an incident. That open area there is a future exercise room. We've had discussions with the Firefighters Union and their athletic committee, and they are willing to look at uh, locating uh, their equipment and some of the department equipment down there and looking after that process. So uh, the plan is to have an exercise area that not only for the firefighters, but all our staff will be able to access it. And uh, you'll also see some uh, shower areas and, and washroom facilities, and uh, hopefully those will be uh, um, able to be uh, constructed, but they're dependent on the budget and what's remaining afterwards. So what we've done is not to steal some of Maurice's uh, uh, thunder, but um, we've uh, itemized what we feel is the most important, of course, is the structure itself. And then if there's any existing funds left over, we will hopefully uh, be able to proceed with some of the, the minor improvements and this is one of them that we're hoping to get uh, in the future. On the main floor plan, you see above you, you see first of all the area at the top is the revised fire prevention offices. Again, uh, that is going to be dependent on whether there's funds left over in the uh, uh, monies that are uh, allocated for this project. So, in the new building itself, you'll see a very important aspect of it, and it's our entrance for the public. So we feel this is very important to us that uh, they have good access, and you'll see later in the plans how the um, access comes in from Pine with the new parking lot. Well, you'll see our administrative area on the right. You also see our training division and a tra new training room that's uh, probably utilized not only by fire service but also city staff and uh, it can also be uh, a backup uh, emergency operations center, which we've had discussions with the uh, 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 deputy city uh, manager's office on that issue. So uh, that is a, a potential for the future as a backup, depending on what uh, happens at City Hall. And uh, we already have a, a fire control center in our station, and we've been moving it into the, the new area there. <coughs> And the second floor is probably our most critical. And the reason being, we're relocating our dispatch to this area. You'll see it at the, the top of the drawing there. And we currently, as you know, we have one dispatcher. Uh, we are building this room for the future. It'll be state of the art. And uh, depending on our, how our call volume increases, there'll come a time when we'll need at least a second call taker or dispatcher. Uh, we've also had entered into discussions with the RCMP and we will have a, a uh, area set up for them in the event that their uh, communication center goes down, they'll be able to relocate as a, a what we call a hot backup in our building and vice versa, we can relocate into theirs uh, should there be a problem such as a fire or if it's damaged from a, a major disaster. Also on this floor, you'll see that uh, we have our offices. Uh, we're building for the future and we've got a communications office there. We'll use that currently with our uh, existing staff that we have, our um, staff chief and our duty chief right beside it. We also have uh, the fire chief's office, administrative assist assistant office, two deputy chiefs and the boardroom. As you know, we currently only have uh, one existing deputy chief, so we're building for the future in this, uh, this building. You also see on the far left of the drawing some renovations that uh, are critical in that we want to renovate the existing fire hall to accommodate uh, our female firefighters. 
our other two stations uh, have had that work complete and we'll need to complete this work on this station to, in order to ensure that they're uh, uh, accommodated. The next slide, we'll turn it over back to Maurice. Yes, Your Worship, uh, we just have a couple slides. These pictures were taken about a week ago, so um, we, we, we broke ground in uh, about the second week of January and we ran into a lot of rain, but anyway, we're, um, we've dewatered the site and we've got concrete in the ground and we're, we're moving forward. So um, it's always uh, seems to be slow getting out of the ground, but now that we've got some foundations and pouring concrete, we're hoping to uh, that we can move along more quickly. We're running a, about a month behind schedule right now, but our plan is we can make up the schedule and, and complete on time for the end of December 2010. And at that point in time, uh, we will be moving the uh, uh, city safety team from their current lease space uh, up to the new facility. There's uh, adequate, more than adequate space for them up here to share with um, the fire chief and, uh, and his staff. And uh, by doing so, we'll save about $86,000 a year in lease cost space, which will, we can return that money back to the city. So from that perspective, it, it's good. It'll be, a, it'll be a good saving for the city, and we'll, um, we'll have the safety team work in the same facilities as the fire department. So um, all in all, right now, the project's looking pretty good. We're keeping a close eye on it, and we're quite confident we can complete the project by the end of uh, 2010. And I'll, I'll uh, just uh, let Tony show you a couple final slides of the outside. These are the uh, architect's uh, drawings that we've asked uh, they provide for us. So you can have a sense of what the building is anticipated to look like. This is the south elevation, so it's looking from Pinewood at the front entrance. See the existing building on the left and uh, the new building on the right with the entranceway. And the, the last slide we have is east elevation. This will be looking from Pine Tree, looking at the uh, first and, and second floor. Um, in relation to the current administration on the right and the existing fire station in behind it on the left. In summary, uh, fire and rescue management team feels confident this expansion will accommodate growth potential that may be required within management due to the estimated population increases and in corresponding staffing levels. We have detailed drawings and plans with me here tonight and uh, you're welcome to review those uh, or at any time should you wish a copy that th those are available to you. Very much. Thank you. Got a question from Councillor Rob and Councillor Lynch. Thank you, Chief. You, um, I noticed in the report that you were talking about the creation of female firefighter accommodations. Um, you, you itemized two deputy chief offices, and you talked about some uh, the other female firefighter accommodations in the other stations. So, what if you you didn't mention the numbers this morning? You talked about growth potential. So, what are we at there for accommodation of female fire, firefighters in the accommodations? The actual. Um, you talk, there's, there's the dorms for the females that are being added to the town centre. How many, how many that, female firefighter would that accommodate? That's correct. Uh, currently we're looking at um, a design of, of having at least one room available with future plans for additional three uh, spots, so a total of four at this station. And how about the other stations? The other stations have a minimum two at each station available. Okay, thank you. Question. Councillor Reid. The emergency operation centers. Do we still have one up at the work shard? Uh, I'll maybe turn that over to uh, Mr. And, and I'm asking for a reason. Um, many years ago, when we did a, um, an emergency exercise, one of the big things, if there was ever a big hazmat um, spill on the train tracks, and there's some pretty lethal stuff that goes through here the elevation of our hospital and our fire halls <laughs> is so low that it would probably and the police station city hall for that matter would make them almost unusable in certain situations so we always kept the the emergency operations center up at the workshop because of its elevation uh, fully operational so that they could be transferred over is that still the case yes the workshop is a backup emergency operations center it is yes Okay, and so then we have three. We have, you could use RCMP, you can use town center and emergency and the, the work chart. Well, right now, C City Hall here is our primary EOC and the but work chart is the backup. Um, we could potentially do a backup at the... Uh, well, I was wondering about Mariner, which would make more sense than town center. Yeah, the, the drawback to town center and having one here at City Hall is the elevation. They're in very, yeah, in yeah. A very close proximity to each other. 
Uh, so, so there are potential other Are we planning on anything at Mariner? An expansion or anything? Not at this point. Uh, no. The reason we're relocating to, if you want to call that the backup BOC, is we currently in the fire service have a fire control center. Right. And all we're doing is just moving it from our training room over to the new facility because uh -huh. okay. it'll be in the new building. Um, we quite often will have, a, if you want to call it departmental uh, EOC, uh, in that the fire service quite often has large incidents that don't involve uh, a good portion of the rest of the city. Usually uh, utilities engineering is involved, but on a minor basis. Okay. Um, so we we have that and we put that into uh, into being on, uh, unfortunately, on uh, multiple times, usually during the year. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none. Thank you very much, Fire Chief. Mr. Robert Bell. Ms. Clerk. The recommendation was that the committee receive the report for information. Moved by Councillor Robinson to receive. Second. Second by Councillor Lynch. All in favor? Councillor Reamer. Thank you. Um, I just noticed on the back um, the section on Plasma Yardville programming and conceptual design. Um, I just wondered if were you going to address that? Uh, yes, Your Worship, um, we uh, presented a report, as Council may remember, uh, back in December uh, with um, six options for the um, upgrading of Plasma Lardville. Um, so since that uh, point in time, um, we've, had, we've had two meetings, one meeting with the uh, Board of Directors of Plasma Lardville, uh, which happened in, in January, and also a meeting with the um, some of the key stakeholders, and that, both of those meetings were completed in January. We have, uh, we had a period now for February. We haven't uh, had a meeting because of the Olympics uh, and, and some other um, important workshops happening. So, we do have one final um, uh, meeting, and that's a public meeting uh, coming up, I believe, on the uh, first week of March, which uh, anybody from, say, Millardville or anywhere in the city will come. Would like to come and provide input into those plans. And um, these uh, some people or people were given the opportunity to comment on what they wanted to see in the facility. So now we're giving them uh, those people, the same people uh, uh, from the general public, a chance to comment on the uh, proposed uh, some of the options before us. So uh, once we have uh, received all the input, uh, we should have all the input from uh, from the three groups uh, put together by uh, the end of March. And uh, our um, our plan is to uh, prepare a report and present it to committee uh, in April. For council's for committee and council's uh, consideration. Thank you. What time will that open house be on March fourth? Is that an afternoon or evening? Pardon me. What time? Uh, the meeting is you seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Okay. On the fourth. All right. Thank you very much. On the fourth, and that meeting, that public meeting, will be held in Place Millardville. Right. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions or comments? The motion is to receive. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimously. That concludes the items on the agenda. Motion to adjourn would be in order. Moved. So moved. Moved by Councillor Asmundson, second by Councillor Reamer. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much. Go Canada, go. <laughs>